after, yes. So, hello, Olaf Kur. It's very nice to see you here today. And it's beautiful to have this connection and connectivity from Iceland to Peru. And it's my pleasure, of course, to start a dialogue series, a dancing dialogue with you over your experiences, your template that came through to you and that you're bringing into the world now, and our resonance. Vice versa. Uh -huh. And I really want to start with this and, and maybe one of the significant things that excites me about you so much as well is that you also riding the wave. Mm -hmm. So Olaf Kaur, what would you like to share with us today about riding the wave? Oh, really, that's a really good question, but I, I love your questions and <clears throat> because they really kind of... Um, are, they are to the point uh, to, from my uh, from, from our dialogue so far, and um, um, so riding the wave uh, or or the journey that I'm currently on is just like the, there. I felt very much a noticeable sort of change, shall we say, in the world uh, since 2020. You know, uh, I mean, it's been happening longer than that and, and um, I, I had a period of really kind of my stability in my life maybe eight years something prior to uh, uh, the COVID uh, and then it, it kind of <laughs> disrupted everything and, uh, and from that time I have basically uh, I feel I've, I've been moved to move into different directions and explore different pathways and, and really kind of step into the process of listening to my to my excitement and my response, you know, internal response to what I'm passionate about, kind of thing. And and that is basically <clears throat> I'm trying to follow that to the to the best of my abilities. And I have been doing that now. I've been doing it for a long part of my life, but very noticeably since I would say 2020. You know, it led me into many different exciting avenues. You know, but I would say uh, that would that would be the answer. Yes, beautiful. To that question. And as you're riding the wave, I feel mm. it's like that cycles of the sea, the flow and the ebb. You, you are with the endings and the beginnings. But at the same time, there is a third component. And Absolutely. We were talking about this and we want to bring this back to you. For Olaf Kaur and me, it's about the threes, the sacred threes mm. and fours, but threes in particular. And what does that mean to you? What is the number three to you? Well, <laughs> I mean, that's like, uh, uh, in, the, in the simplicity of the question, uh, that's a very in-depth question, you know? I know. And um, um, from my perspective, it's like, uh, I see uh, most things come in threes. Uh, and threes, three is the first sort of hole that I, you know, that I have um, sort of learned to understand. And you can say, like, you know, even down to uh, level of particles, you know, and physics, and you know, the building blocks of the of the universe is in threes. You know, it's like we have. You have uh, neutron, electrons, and protons. You know the uh, common trees and uh, negatively charged, positively charged, and, and neutrally charged. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also, like I would say, you know, in in most kind of at least systems that I have found appealing, at least to me. And I, I'm not negating other systems or other approaches and. Uh, in most system, it is like always the, the quintessential uh, qualities of them are uh, some kind of a trinity based approach. Yes. And um, so, yeah, that would be kind of, and, uh, and I've explored that a little bit, but it comes down to a very simple, simple idea 
very simple sort of uh, understanding that like uh, that magnetism electricity and sort of resonance or 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 the harmonic factor between them is sort of representative of the kind of dance of aliveness in almost everything you know and you can see it from a level of mind level of emotion on personal level you know if you look for it you will see it on in almost everything so yeah beautiful and that brings us really to that whole idea of regeneration life is not just the beginning and an ending there is something after some call the rebirthing some call the regeneration mm -hmm. and this is also the wave that i feel we're riding together not only all of core and myself but i feel all of us and of course for many of us to step out of the end and really come into the regeneration and the rebirthing can be a little bit tricky so I feel your beautiful template mm. that is not really designed, but yet it is like a design and it is like a template that allows us to look at life from a perspective of flow and that threes that take us beyond an end and be also happy with each part of the journey. And so I want to take all of us in. So all of course is using this template currently for organizations. And for me, this is more than organizational development. And I have been working in that field as well. So I, I feel I have a little bit of, I have something to say about it. I feel it's more that gold print of an organization, not only an organization, an organization can be a community, a family can be even a government. But I feel if we have that kind of blueprint, that kind of template that you brought through, then we are creating the regenerative. We are creating something new with all the grace to let the old go. So I want to bring this into your quintessence and the first important threes of your template, all of course, which you call the conscious inquiry the conscious vision and the execution. Would you like to share with us what that means to you and how you're bringing this into the world? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I mean, it's basically what you mentioned, the conscious inquiry, the conscious vision, the conscious, conscious execution. I mean, it's really just bringing a practical approach to like this Trinity or consciousness principles. And I mentioned before, and it's also like we need we need foundation to stand on, uh, even in front of you know change, in, even in front of hard changes in our lives. So, so regeneration is not to get lost in the nothingness. It is find still finding a solid ground to stand on while we engage with the processes of change. You know, like and nature and life is is solid in its in its ways and its and its uh, and its processes so the three of the the, uh, the inquiry you now the conscious inquiry and the conscious vision and the conscious execution well it can also be reflected in even you know have you heard about the you theory by otto Schermer? you got to you know no, i have a similar I have. yeah it's a similar idea you know it, it is really to engage in the process of consciousness itself and start to use listening uh, using the, our, our ability to listen to actually delve deeper into the potential uh, sort of transformation of, of what is changing when you can say that like sometimes we go into phases where there are there are sometimes difficult things to deal with and we can feel resistance and friction and sometimes negative and difficult emotions and things like that. It doesn't mean that it, necessar that it is necessarily bad. Uh, and uh, it means sometimes that we have to, but sometimes rather than avoiding it, stepping away from it, it, it might actually be a better idea to step more, more into it and really investigate and explore what, what is the message here or is it something 
that I need to explore further? Is it something I need to let go of? And that can be true on a personal level. That can be true for a relationship. It can be true for organization, whatever it is, you know. And uh, so it's really coming into like to see the value of inquiry. And, and in, in the inquiry, in the depth of inquiry, you will encounter things and that's why I also call it conscious inquiry, because we need to be aware of when, what the nature of the process. It's not just to let it run on autopilot. It is allowing things to emerge. Sometimes we can make choices whether to let it go or whether you want to continue to maintain them. And every moment has the potential or offers us that possibility of choice. And uh, so there are things usually in, in a natural changing world in, a, in, our, in our civilization, in our psyche, things that come up that, you know, are no longer relevant. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, but to make room for what is relevant, we have to let go of what is no longer relevant. Exactly. That is the essence of conscious inquiry. Yes. It is to inquire if we are holding on to something that is no longer relevant, whether it's for ourselves, our relationships, or organization, so we can let it go. The beauty of letting it go, the other side of conscious inquiry, is that then to allow what is relevant to emerge. And sometimes it's an integration of old ideas with new ideas, whatever it is. So, uh, so eventually we'll come to a point where we tap into the core essence or the authentic essence of ourselves. And I like, and my idea, the theory that I have is that organization also has a seed identity or core identity. You know, and sometimes this, we look past this idea and we th look at organization as mechanistic rather than holistic and living system which is kind of my idea of one and some other others have the same idea because if we have people, we have living entities and living consciousness in the field, then it's more close to be a living system rather than a mechanical one. So when we approach it as a living system, so we are more likely to get more out of it yes. as the living system. So that is the idea of what, you know, it's also this approach of conscious inquiry that leads into the connection with the seed and very approach the, the consciousness at the core essence of the consciousness of who we are and that gives us the ability to tap into the vision the vision of the seed like in, in every seed and every core idea or core identity there is the, the, the whatever emerges from it and there's like like in a seed uh, of a tree there's the seed and the tree is already in its fullness within the seed we can so it, through that connect connection is actually getting to a point of clarity of vision, meaningful, purposeful, existential vision, and that is really kind of what I am, uh, what the what the what the essence of conscious vision is the next part of the thing. And I would like to say in that you know what I found very interesting and almost paradoxical in that relationship is that like, um, well, you could say the, the vision, uh, our good health and you know, dynamic vision is that, yeah, it's almost defined was like where we are going is also where we are coming from. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, it's, and, and that also to me reflects like the principles of resonance. Yes. We're already there. We're already connected to that space, even though we are moving towards it at the same time. You know, it's like, uh, and that creates like, uh, moves us still into this. It's not. It's not just sitting with it like as if, to, to as we connect with the resonance principle or the connection, uh, connection to the core identity or our authentic selves, which is really the most important thing. But then the idea is that how do we perpetuate it? in this reality that we are in the world of matter you know the world of obstacles and challenges you know how do we do that uh, the, and the and the, the answer to that is conscious execution it is actually having um 
you know, through this process of conscious inquiry and and and, and connecting with the uh, with the uh, with the vision, which is actually like almost like just like a vision. You can call both those two aspects like a vision, <clears throat> a vision quest for yourself. But that moves us into conscious execution, which is finding appropriate action to anchor <clears throat> that vision into reality. Yes. It, and, 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 and it's like that can be something and, and that is actually that can be small thing or big thing it doesn't have to be a big thing it can be a very small thing it could even be like I you know let's just uh, write down a few notes in, in my book uh, you know about the vision I was having or you know do a painting or it can also be a manifestation for an entire organization or uh, an invention or whatever it is that is relevant the idea that it is it just needs to be relevant yes so yeah that, that's basically the core yeah. part of the of the template and then and it's like um and, and understanding also that this relationship between those three parts is perpetual it's yes. not something you do just once or you do just on on a, on a, you know on a on a Sunday, it's a con continuous sort of process, and understanding that these kind of three three aspects. There's also you can call it like just listening, being, and doing, mm -hmm. are always with us. So it's like sometimes we need to just tune a little bit more into listening, a little bit more into being and envisioning, and sometimes a little bit more into doing and not getting lost in any of those parts, but letting them work together. And that really gives us access into whatever systems we are connected to and allows us to live in a holistic whole systems way through this very simple principle, you know, if we manage to practice it and maintain it. Yes. Well, all of course, thank you so much for sharing. You know, what you have brought through and what you shared with us today, it, it is so deep and so beautiful, so true and yet so authentic. And in a way, this is, this is a way to live as a living system. We are not separated from nature, we are part. And as we are moving back into that harmony, that you have beautifully illustrated for us now, I feel we are riding the wave into the new. We are taking this energy into the new. We can let go with grace to make that space. And of course the threes for me also take away the fear of death or ending. Some things need to die, even that physical body at some point, but it doesn't mean we're done. And I really love and appreciate how you brought all of this in. And I hope those who are with us today or whenever they listen to it, they can feel the magic and the truth in this beautiful three essential parts of your template. So I would like to invite you again that we can speak again and explore other aspects to find more of our resonance, to discover more of these beautiful threes and other amazing, simple practices and processes that you are offering, literally, the world. And it is beautiful to me how much we have in common and how much I, I resonate so naturally because some of these things in other terms I have experienced and studied and embodied myself. And I feel part of what you're saying is also we need to live it. It's not, it's the listening, the consciousness for me is also the living it. And I feel what you are, have given us today is something beautiful to live that conscious inquiry, that listening beyond the duality, the, the good and the bad, the positive and negative, the beginning and the end, but at this amazing living consciousness and living systems that are perpetual and perpetual 
one of my favorite words too. One of the companies I had in Indonesia was called Cemala, Panjoran Cemalang, the perpetual flow, the perpetual fountain, mm -hmm. related to the element of water, of course. So yes, Olaf Kur, thank you so much for today. I think it was absolutely fabulous. Of course, we are curious to hear what people feel and think about that. And we will continue to explore your template more and more resonance and bring these seeds more into the world. Well, thank you so much for your time and, 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 and your energy and your restments. Uh, you know, and and uh, it's, really, it's, been, it's been really a pleasure, pleasure to talk to you. I look forward to uh, our next uh, talk. Um, yeah, I mean, and and I w really want to elaborate. Like, I mean, we really, we really like to complicate things, right? And and it really doesn't have to be complicated. No. But like you said, you know, it doesn't have and, uh, not at all. But it needs to be lived, and that's really, you know. And we have all access to ourselves through these basic principles, yes. you know, of the Trinity, you know, this on the living systems within us, and and it's like and 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 one of the key elements of regeneration is simply to listen into the feedback loops of reality of our own reality of our own perspective of reality because that's where the only place where the listening can take place. Yes. Not filtered through someone else, but filtered through our own perspective. And that that is really the key for anyone that wants to use you want to utilize and, 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 and live these kind of basic principles. Beautiful. So thank you very much. Thank you. And we want to be back for more on this beautiful dancing dialogue. This right wave and your wonderful template. All right.